Hello YouTube, this is Kez Maina. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is a health and lifestyle channel where we talk about different health conditions and lifestyle modifications to accommodate the same. Kariboni, today's video is a continuation on our HIV and AIDS topic. And uh, on the previous video, we talked about predisposing factors, and today we are going to talk about prevention. Now, there are a few points Ambazo Utaskia, and you will, they will ring a bell from the previous video. And this is because prevention and predisposing factors are kind of intermarried. In that, when you avoid exposing yourself to something, you're preventing yourself from getting it. You're getting it? So, if you avoid these predisposing factors, you're in short preventing yourself. Yeah. So, right here, I am going to, to insert the definition of prevention. And prevention is the action of aimed at eradicating, eliminating, or minimizing the impact of disease and disability. In this inst inst instant, we are talking about HIV and AIDS. So, you're, pre you're preventing yourself from contracting... HIV and AIDS, and for those who, are, who have already contracted, you're preventing it from complicating and worsening into full-blown AIDS. Now, the difference between HIV and, and AIDS is on the previous video, so after this, when you end up watching, you can watch. Okay? Now, we have a few preventive measures, and I'm going to get into it. So, the first thing we're going to talk about is sexual contact. And it is the same thing we started with on the previous video. So, kuna predisposing factor in now on the prevention bit of the sexual contact, we are going to talk about three things. Number one, tutongelea abstinence, ABC. Abstinence, abstinence of course basically means you stay away from sex. Yeah. Two is being faithful or uh, having one multiple partner. Three is use of condoms and uh, contact tracing this means that you're using condoms and if you do have hiv AIDS, uh, if you do have intercourse without having a condom then you trace that contact get checked and see if there's a need to take medication yeah yeah so on the sexual contact it's that another preventative measure you're going to take is avoid sharing needles this is mainly for iv drug users because i highly doubt there are any medical facilities right now that are using needles and syringes i highly doubt that but if there are it's not good <laughs> just stop so avoid it another thing that we are going to another preventative measure this is health education and sensitization this will help reduce stigma around HIV and AIDS. Now, I know stigma around HIV and AIDS is not as bad as it was when HIV and AIDS was coming into our lives, but it's still there. So, with HIV, with health education and sensitization, we are going to help reduce this stigma and this will help people who, are already, who have already contracted the disease to seek for help, to go get those drugs that they need to continue living a positive life. Yes? Yeah, so another thing, HIV testing and treating. Let's do our um, regular checks. Just the way you check your blood pressure, ungeza HIV up on Dani, update your status so that you will know if you're positive, the earliest the better for you to start your medication before your, immune start, uh, your, your immunity is all shattered. Yeah, and finally, uh, the drugs that are used to prevent HIV and AIDS. These are two types. There is PrEP and PrEP. I'm going to talk about PrEP first. PrEP stands for pre-exposure prophylaxis. This means that even before you've exposed yourself to the virus, you've already taken the pill so that it can keep you safe. It can prevent you from contracting the, vi the virus. You might ask, ask yourself, why am I doing this? It's not for everyone. There are a few people who would actually go for this, who actually qualify. Because So, uh, the people who would go with this kind of uh, prevention 
first of all, were the sexual commercial workers. This usually you don't you don't have a history of the person you're with, and you probably can't trace them even after a condom breaks. Another person who would benefit from this is a person who has, who their partner has been diagnosed with HIV and AIDS, and they don't want to leave them, and they don't want to use condoms. Again, that one uses prep. Now, there is maybe drug, drug users as well they might decide to use prep as well. Now, finally, PEP. PEP is post-exposure prophylaxis. This is taken within 72 hours of exposure. After you've probably had a condom burst, uh, maybe a needle stick for healthcare workers, you take the drug within 72 hours and you take it for a whole month. You take it continuously until you finish. That way you're going to be sure that the virus did not penetrate into your system. These services are offered in any facility, any government facility to start with, and also any other, even private facilities that is accredited by the MOH for these services, for the CCC services. Yeah, you can always walk into that. You ask whatever questions you need to ask, even when you go to get those papers. Yeah, so that is it for now. I'll see you next time.